Greetings everybody and uh, welcome to another day out in the landscape. In this video I want to talk a little bit about hand holding the camera. I think it's something that uh, a lot of us take for granted. Uh, however, a bit like using a tripod, I think there is um, some simple things that you can adopt um, in order to ensure that any time that you handheld handhold in the landscape, you're maximizing your chances for success. So most um, mirrorless cameras these days have got image stabilization uh, built into them. Those that haven't, I know that you can get optically stabilized lenses that attempt to do uh, the same thing. Uh, some stabilization systems are better than others, allegedly. Um, but I think regardless of what system you're using, A, have it switched on, but B, just adopt a few things to actually help the system in order to get the maximum out of it. And the first thing is to stabilize yourself as much as you possibly can. Ordinarily in the landscape, I would have a tripod. However, right now I'm the tripod. So rather than sort of, I'm being extreme, right? You know, stand on one leg and you know, hold it out with one hand, unless I was doing some kind of creative movement, um, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't adopt that. I would uh, have a leg placement that felt steady and comfortable, uh, the kind of leg placement that you could maintain for, uh, you know, several seconds, several minutes. The other thing that I would do is I would tuck my arms uh, into my body uh, in order to uh, stabilize my arms and use the shape of my body as much as I possibly can um, to, uh, you know, to, to stabilize my hands and stabilize my wrists. Um, it's a technique uh, I used to use when uh, I used a t a target air guns. Uh, for target air guns, you were taught to sort of twist your hips and sort of tuck your elbow onto your hip in order to you know, create a stable platform. Very, very similar in some respects. So tucking your arm into your body in order to support the camera. Uh, obviously this arm needs to be up in the air um, because uh, that's where the shutter button is. But if you have one of these uh, battery grips, then of course you don't need to have your arm up in the air. You could actually tuck this arm alongside your body in order to uh, help that stabilization. Now, I don't have that, so I'm having to have uh, an arm up in the air. However, this one can still be used to uh, stabilize the camera as much as possible. And that's with um, stabilization switched on. So that's, that's helping the stabilization and enabling you to get a reasonably uh, sharp picture. Uh, other things that I would do at handheld, so I would still have the level meter switched on inside the camera to make sure that the camera is level. Uh, so currently I've got it in portrait orientation, so it would be the level meter across the short end of the frame uh, that I would be uh, paying attention to. Um, I would also uh, still manually select my focus point um, and for my subject, which is uh, the, the tree that you saw in the B-roll, uh, I would be selecting a focus point that's sort of somewhere on the trunk of the tree. And I would also use autofocus. Now, you could manually focus on the tree, um, but I think you're, you're going to lean backwards and forwards. You're going to shuffle your feet. You're going to move your body ever so fractionally. So if you do use manual focus, unless you take the picture there and then, there is a danger that that focus might actually drift. If you actually use autofocus and let the camera do the work, then you can autofocus and take the shot and you're far more likely to come away with a, a sharp result. Again, it's about using the technology that you've got in order to maximize the potential for uh, results. The other thing that I would do handheld is I would still do a boundary check. I'd still check the edges of my frames uh, for uh, distractions. So if I focus in on that tree right now, I'm just gonna zoom in and out ever so slightly so that it's got 
a bit of proportions. I've got Castle Crag up above it. I haven't really got any distractions left and right, which is quite good. But what I am trying to do is there's some green ferns at the bottom. I want them to be in the frame, but I want it to be obvious that they're in the frame. So I don't want so, sort of some little fronds. I actually want them to be there properly. So I've zoomed in and out ever so slightly. I'm happy with that. I'm checking my level meter. I've already selected a focus point that's on the tree. The stabilization is kicked in because the picture has now become uh, smooth every time I move the camera. One last check of the level meter. And there's my frame. It's actually a very nice tree. I might actually move a little bit further back um, so that the, uh, the, the background uh, is more dominant or larger and then the tree hopefully will stand out. The danger of course is that moving further back I introduce some more distractions but you know I won't know that um, uh, till I try. So there is nothing wrong with hand holding as a landscape photographer. Nothing wrong with it whatsoever. I would always encourage people to use a, a tripod because um, a bit like uh, a painter using a stand for their canvas, I use a tripod in the same way with my camera. It slows me down, makes me more considerate, makes me think about what I'm doing just a little bit more. Um, but right now today, um, I'm quite keen to get to the top uh, of uh, the fell that I'm currently climbing. So, uh, and I don't think this image is going to win any competitions, uh, but it's, it's, it's a nice image. Uh, and getting the camera out quickly, uh, grabbing a handheld uh, just means I can um, take that image away and then I can have a play with it uh, when I get home. But what I am going to do is I am going to move up there and I'm going to take you with me just to see whether that's any better. Let's explore. So I've come up the bank a little bit because as I suspected, that would help to isolate my subject, which it has, although I have now got a tree on the right hand side. It's lost all of its leaf. So you've kind of got these gray tendrils reaching out, but yeah, I think that's okay. Uh, camera is still handheld. Uh, stabilization is switched on. So I'm going to apply all the usual techniques. I'm going to tuck, tuck this arm in, cup the camera in the palm of my hand, and then just rest my thumb and fingers on the zoom ring so it's easily accessible. And then this one is going to come over the top. As you can see, you know, I've got, I've got firm hold of the camera. It's not going to go anywhere. Uh, and then this just helps to stabilize it in place. I could do with losing a few pounds, so I'll just dig my elbow <laughs> into those few pounds. Uh, right, let's do the frame up stuff. Zoom in a wee bit. Right, what I'm doing at the minute is just checking the level and then using the zoom to make sure that I haven't got any distractions. I'm touching my shutter button just to make sure that the image that I can see is in focus, which it is. So yeah, from there, the edges of my frame are looking pretty good. Through the viewfinder, it doesn't look too bad in terms of distractions. I'm just gonna move the focus point across one so it's on the trunk of the tree. That's looking good. Histogram looks good. Uh, technical data, I am 15th of a second at F8. Right, so I'm going to touch the shutter button to activate focus and stabilization. There it is. One last boundary check. Bang. And then what I'll always do is review the image through the viewfinder. Yeah, I think that looks okay. That'll do. 
Uh, one last technical thing to consider. Um, I don't use a self timer when I'm handheld. Uh, I will just have the thing, uh, have the thing fire. Um, normally on a tripod, I'd be on a two second timer. I actually switch that off uh, for uh, handholding. Um, just suits my technique. Um, so, I mean, it, it is as simple as that. I mean, largely I take it for granted um, because I use a tripod so often, but I think it's, it's worth having a handheld technique that works uh, and maximizes both the, the technology and the opportunity that you've got uh, in front of you. Whatever camera I have now, um, it will either have stabilization in it or it will have a lens that's opti optically stabilized because I know that there will be uh, situations where hand holding is the, you know, the only option. A good example of that is, you know, a sudden rainbow uh, appearing in front of you. I know people that have missed opportunities like that because they've been faffing with their tripods, um, whereas I've been uh, uh, hand holding and I've literally just put the camera up to my face, adopted my usual technique and I've managed to, you know, to grab an image. And I would far prefer to have an opportunity to do that rather than miss out, miss out on it entirely. And I've seen the frustration and the disappointment on other people's faces when, you know, the rainbow has come and then a few seconds later it's gone because the sun's gone in behind a cloud or whatever. So, so for those of you that are, um, you know, uh, working on technique, coming up with a hand-holding or hand-held approach I think is absolutely crucial. For me, it's a no-brainer, but it is something that I've had to think about and something that I've had to work on in order to make it work for me. So hand-holding in the landscape definitely isn't for everybody, but I would still encourage anybody that undertakes landscape photography, I'd still encourage you to think about adopting a mechanism that enables you to do it simply because, like I said, when I was um, photographing the tree, I have been in situations where there has been no other option. And I would far prefer to have the opportunity to grab the moment rather than miss out on it entirely. And those are just the items that work for me. I'm sure for each and every one of you, there will be other things that you employ. I mean, some people, they use uh, monopods, you know, a, a single uh, tripod leg, uh, for instance. Uh, lots of um, sports, I've seen lots of sports photographers use uh, monopods. Um, in my Formula One days, uh, I tried to use a monopod uh, in order to do panning, but it just didn't work for me. In fact, uh, I tried to use, I did go and buy one and I tried to use it. Uh, and if anything, it made me fall over. Um, uh, you know, the, the, rather than the camera doing that, the camera did that. Um, so I, I gave up on it and I just worked on my uh, handheld technique for motorsport. And maybe, maybe that's where a lot of this comes from uh, in terms of you know, being able to find a mechanism that would make it work in motorsport and then applying the same kind of rationale and same approach here out in the landscape. But ultimately, I hope it's been interesting. I hope it's given you some thoughts and ideas. Um, do go out and explore it yourself go and have a play um, and just just find a method that works for you so thank you very much for watching if you're not a subscriber please do consider subscribing to my channel hit the subscribe button hit the bell icon that's alongside the subscribe button and then you get three options select all and then you'll get notified as to when i upload new content which is uh, every two weeks uh, if you've liked this video please do consider giving it a thumbs up it does help the channel, helps the visibility of the channel and uh, you know, enables uh, my content to be shared with a, a much uh, wider audience. So thanks once again. Do stay safe, do stay well. Uh, and until the next one, I shall see you again soon. Cheerio for now. I'm going to go and carry on <laughs> climbing up this fell, which is looking steep. But hey, it'll be worth it when I get to the top. See you later. <laughs>